Hi friends, welcome back to our channel Learning Literature Online. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe it and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss the regular updates from this channel. Today, we are going to discuss a poem in memory of W.B. Yeats written by famous modernist writer W.H. Auden. It was written in 1939 following the death of the Irish poet W.B. Yeats in January of that year. It is an elegy for the dead poet. It was written in 1939 which was a critical year for the poet as well as the world. The poet Auden moved to New York in the year and the world witnessed Second World War. The poem is also a meditation on the role and place of poetry in the modern world. The poet W.H. Auden was born on 21st February 1907 and was died in 1973. He was a British American poet. He was born and raised in industrial section of Northern England by a physician father and strict Anglican mother. He was a poet, playwright, critic and librettist. He won Pulitzer Prize in 1948 for his work The Age of Anxiety. His themes ranges from left to political, social and psychological context. Critics called him anti-romantic. He belonged to Oxford group of poets or Auden generation which included Stephen Spencer, Cecil de Lewis and Louis Magnus. The group Auden generation followed Marxist and anti-fascist doctrines and addressed social, political and economic concerns in their writings. The poem in memory of W.B. Eats was written within one month of Eats' death and published shortly after it. The poem is an elegy mourning the death of W.B. Eats, but it is different from traditional conventional elegy where nature will be presented mourning. The poem explores the themes of life after death, power of poetry and human condition. The poem is full of dark images. It was published in 1939 itself. The poem in memory of W.B. Eats. The poem is divided into three parts. The first part contains six stanzas and second part contains one stanza and third part contains six part six stanza also. The poem first stanza. He disappeared in the dead of winter. The brooks were frozen, the airports almost deserted and snow disfigured the public statues. The mercury sang in the mouth of the dying day. What instruments we have agreed, the day of his death was a dark cold day. The poet, the speaker, begins here discussing the death of poet W.B. Eats. He died in the dead of winter. He disappeared in the, died of win the dead of winter. It was in dead winter as it is in January 1939. The brooks were frozen. The small rivers were frozen as it was the dead winter. The airports almost deserted. It was empty. And snow disfigured the public statues. It was so difficult to identify, to figure out to make out the public statues as the statues were covered with the snow. The mercury sang in the mouth of the dying day. The dying day means when evening approaches. The mercury sang. The mercury dropped in the mouth of the dying day 
as the acuteness of the weather. What instruments we have agree the day of his death was a dark cold day. Instruments to measure the intensity of temperature agreed it was a dark cold day that the death of poet occurred. It was the case of the city life. But in the far away countryside or hillside or in the forest, it was different. Far from his illness, the wolves ran on through the evergreen forest. The peasant river was untempted by the fashionable craze, by mauling things. The death of the poet was kept from his poem. The natural world was unaffected. Far from the place where he was lying ill, the wolves ran on through the evergreen forest. They were leading their usual life. They were not affected by the illness or death of the poet W.B. Eats. The peasant river was untempted by the fashionable case. The peasant river, the humble river, was unaffected by the fashionable case built on the bank of the river. Fashionable harbors, beautiful harbors were built on the bank of the river, but the peasant river was untempted by these fashionable quays, also by mourning tanks. The death of the poet was kept from his poems. Even though the poet, dead, poet died, his poems were still being read. It was unaffected by the poet's death. The poems were still alive. It is being still read. But from for him it was his last, last afternoon as himself, an afternoon of nurses and rumours. The provinces of his body revolted. The squares of his mind were empty. Silence invaded the suburbs. The current of his feeling failed. He became his admirers. But for him. In the last two stanzas, the poet explained the case of city life and the case of countryside. Here, as far as the poet W.B. Eats was concerned, it was the last afternoon of his life. An afternoon of nurses and roommates, as he was admitted in hospital, his last afternoon itself was an afternoon of nurses and roommates of his death. Rumours of his death was spreading, so it was rumours. The provinces of his body revolted. The vital parts of his body, major parts of his body stopped working. It was retiring one by one. The squares of his mind were empty. He could not remember anything and silence invaded the suburbs. Silence uh, slowly and slowly seized the outer part of his body. The squares of his mind were empty. He could not remember anything. He could not recognize anything because his memory and brain had already stopped working and silence invaded the suburbs of his body and the suburb, the word suburb also is being used as a pun because it is, it's me, it means the outer part of city life. The current of his feeling failed. He became his admirers. The current of his feeling failed. He could not feel anything no more. He became his admirers. Now, he could not feel anything. His admirers were already anticipating his death and he has become, he had become a part of his admirers. Hereafter, 
he will be living in the mind of his admirers. Now he is scattered among a hundred cities and only given over to unfamiliar affections to find the happiness in another kind of wood and be punished under a foreign code of conscience, the words of, death, of a dead man are modified in the guts of living. Now he is scattered among hundred cities. Now onwards he will be read all over the world. His poetry is being scattered among a hundred cities. It will be read from different parts of the world, from around the world, and only given over to unfamiliar affections. He will be read from different parts of the world, and he will be given over to unfamiliar affections. He will be unfamiliar with the affections the readers have towards him. Here, the poet brings out relationship between poet and readers. It is through unfamiliar affections because the poet is unfamiliar towards what affections the readers will have. Here, the poet brings a modernist concept of death of order. He will be to find his happiness in another kind of wood. He will be read by another kind of people and be punished under a foreign code of conscience. For of foreign code of conscience means in different languages. People who do not know the English well will try to translate his poems into their own languages, where the true spirit of the poem may be lost. There may be changes in what he actually thought. So the poet says that hereafter he may be punished under a foreign code of conscience. The words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living. The words of the dead poet will be explained according to the uh, conscience, according to the belief or according to the cultures of the living. So he will be uh, read differently from different parts of the world hereafter. Even though the poet is dead, his poem will be still living and will be read from different parts of the world. So here it is the death of the author. But in the importance and noise of tomorrow, when the brokers are roaring like beasts on the floor of the boys, the poor and the poor have the sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed and each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom. A few thousand will think of this day as one thing of a day when one did something slightly unusual. Again, the poet take, takes us to the city life. But in the importance and noise of tomorrow, when the brokers are roaring like bees on the floor of the boys. Here, the poet is taking us to the commercial Sundays of the city. It will be noisy. It will, there will be crowd. There will be brokers roaring like bees on the floor of the boys. The, commercial part of the city will be unaffected. The stock exchanges in the city will be unaffected by the death of the poet. But in the importance and noise of tomorrow, when the brokers are roaring like bees on the floor of the boys, it is unaffected by the death of the poet and the poor have the sufferings to which they are fairly accustomed. There is no change in the life of poor people also. They have still the suffering to which they are fairly used to. There is no change by the death of the poet or the poem itself. 
they have their suffering to which they are fairly accustomed. Accustomed means used to. And each in the cell of himself is almost convinced of his freedom. There is a notion, a subconscious notion that each in their cell are thinking of their own freedom. So, they are also unaffected, unaware. They are not conscious of the death of the poet and they are going their own life as usual. Poor people and the commercial center of the city are not changed by the death of the poet. A few thousand will think of this day as one thinks of a day when one did something slightly unusual. A few thousand, a few people will think of this day. A few people will remember this day as one thing of a day. As it is the case of a day will be remembered if it was did something slightly unusual. One will tend to remember a day if something happened unusual on that day. A refrain, what instruments we have agreed the day of his death was a dark call today. It is a refrain used in the first stanza itself. What instruments we have agreed the day of his death was a dark call today. According to the instruments, measurements, it is a dark call today. Here, in the past, first part of this poem, the poet brings out different imageries to discuss what changes was there in the life of city people and village people and the poet itself by his death. What changes are there to his poems also. The part second, you were silly like us, your gift survived at all, the parish of rich women, physical decay yourself, mad Ireland hurt you into poetry. Now Ireland has her madness and her weather still, for poetry makes nothing happen. It survives in the valley of its making where executives would never want to tamper. Flows on south from ranges of isolation and the busy graves. Road towns that we believe and die in. It surveys a way of happening a mouth. Here the poet explains the life of the poet itself. Poet WB eats itself. You are silly like us. You are a human. You are silly like us. Your gift survived at all. Your gift will survive at all. The parish of rich women. Here is a allusion to the rich woman mad gone who he left, whom he left. The parish of rich women, physical decay yourself. See, everything beautiful. Everything physical, everything human will decay, will die. Mad Ireland hurt you into poetry. The Ireland was not influenced by your poetry. You had much consideration for Ireland. You had given wider consideration for Ireland. But Ireland is mad, is not affected by your poetry. You had tried to bring... Uh, reformation in to Ireland but Ireland is mad now Ireland has her madness and her weather still it doesn't ready to change even though the poet WB Eats had great uh, intentions in his mind and his poetry was directed towards this intention the Ireland was not ready to change for poetry makes nothing happen. Here is a common notion, a common saying that poetry will change anything. It survives in the valley of its making where executives would never want to temper. The poetry survives in the valley of its making. It will re remains there in the valley of its making, the poetry's making, where executives would never want to temper, where 
the rulers were not ready to change flows on south from ranges of isolation and busy grief see the poetry where it originated the busy grief and ranges of isolation rose towns that we believe and die in it surveys a way of happening a mouth it is it surveys as it is a way of speaking then the third part it con contains six stanzas a to receive an honored guest william eats is laid to rest let the irish vessel vessel lie emptied of its poetry here is an apostrophe he is calling the earth earth you please receive an honored guest here the poet w b eats is brought here to bury receive an honored guest w b eats william eats is laid to rest here is lying buried let the irish vessel is a metaphor irish vessel is used to, to denote the poet the body of his poet lie emptied of its poetry it is not there the poetry is not there in the body of this poet w b eats let the irish vessel lie emptied of its poetry in the nightmare of the dark all the dogs of europe bark and living nations wait each sequestered in its hate in the nightmare of the dark all the dogs of europe bark in the nightmare of the dark it is on the threshold of a nightmare that is second world war the poet died in the january of 1939 and second world war started in first september 1939 so the world itself is on the verge of a nightmare of the dark all the dogs of europe bark hitler mussolini and someone like this germany italy were barking for the war and the living nations wait and the living nations wait for each sequestered in its hate and they are waiting and each sequestered means each are satisfied each is sequestered in its hate the terror of europe the second world war each is wing it it is satisfied in its hate the terror of europe is second world war and all the dogs of europe are waiting for it happen intellectual disgrace tears from every human face and the seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye intellectual disgrace can be seen from every every human face intellectually they are on the high but its disgrace can be seen from every human face and seas of pity lie locked and frozen in each eye in each eye there is no warmth it is been locked and frozen what a seas of pity a seas of the seas of pity can be seen locked and frozen in each eye a kind of snobbishness intellectual sn snobbishness is coming out of every human face and the world is affected by the terror of war and it can be identified from each face follow poet follow right to the bottom of the night with your unconstraining voice still persuade us rejoice see if you want peaceness of mind the tranquility of mind if you want a peaceful life follow poet follow right to the bottom of the night follow him deep with your unconstraining voice still persuade us to joys you the poet your unconstraining voice still persuade us we people to be happy so if you people are in search of peaceful of mind poet please follow poet and his ways
with the framing of a vase make a vineyard of the curse sing of human unsuccess in a rapture of distress with the farming of a vase make a vineyard of the curse sing human unsuccess in rapture of distress with the farming of this poetry make the vineyard of the case make it make the vineyard of case beautiful with the farming of a vase sing of human unsuccess the poem that sing of human unsuccess in rapture of distress in the desert of the heart let the healing fountain start in the prison of his days teach the free man how to praise in the desert of the heart see that is the power of poetry let the healing fountain start from the desert of the heart let the healing fountain start in the prison of his days the days are being captive in the terror of the world so in the prison of his days teach the free man how to praise how to be happy teach the free man how to praise and be happy and be peaceful it is being a uh, the uh, moralistic aspect of this poetry so the poet is concluding his poem by these beautiful lines in the desert of the heart let the healing fountain start in the prison of his days teach the free man how to praise the poem is over the structure of poem we have already discussed it is being divided into three parts the parts also for the first into a stanzas of different length that means the first part contains six stanzas and the second part contains one stanza and the third part contains also six stanza there is no rhyming scheme in first two stanzas but the last has a a b b c d c c d d poetic devices used in this poem are illusion alliteration enchantment imagery symbols all these are being used a short analysis of in memory of wb eats in the first section the poet discusses the death of wb eats in the dead of winter a time when the brooks were all frozen over and snow made it difficult to identify the public statues it was so called in the mercury in the thermometers dropped as he lay ill and dying the world and specifically ireland went on as usual it was not changed unaffected a common theme of odens when dealing with the death when eats died the poetry eats wrote remains unaffected by the fact that eats the man has died odden then describes its death in the state's third stanza how he died how the provincial part of his body died how his memory died how the suburbs died in the third stanza concluding that with his passing it became his admirers once is the man had ceased to be is the poet became whatever his readers and fans decided he was here we can sense odden making a border point about the immortality of poets they survive or don't survive depending on who reads them and how those readers read them its work is scattered all over the world in those cities where people read him often finding surprising things in his work which its himself would not recognize odden here is prefiguring one of the most influential ideas in 20th century literary criticism that of the intentional fallacy or death of the author where the worth and meaning of a writer lie with the reader rather than the author odden says that the words of a dead man are modified in the guts of the living we cannot help but change the meaning of what a poet wrote adapting it to suit out our times and our own feelings 
Auden concludes first, sec first section acknowledging that the world will go on tomorrow, but a few thousand will think of the day each died as one think of a day when one did something slightly unusual. There is a refusal to indulge in sentimental public mourning here and a downplaying of the importance of its death. It is important and noteworthy, but it is like a day on which one does something out of the ordinary rather than a dramatic day that changes everything. Part second, in the second section, poet addresses the dead eats directly. You are silly like us, he says, and begins to turn away from eats in particular to think about poetry more generally. It is here that Auden makes his famous statement that poetry makes nothing happen. This is often analyzed as an admission of poetry's limitation as a tool for social and political change. Auden once said in an interview that his poetry didn't help to save a single Jew who was murdered in the Holocaust. Auden says in the previous line that Ireland has a madness and her weather still because poetry makes nothing happen. But who in their right mind would expect a poem to change the weather? This is absurd and deliberately so. Oren is wryly remarking, remarking on the failure of poetry to change things. But this is not quite the cry of despair and powerlessness it is often taken for. After all, the, as Oren goes on to say, poetry surveys in a whole host of places and although it doesn't make anything happen, it is itself a way of happening. Part 3, final section, in memory of W.B. Eats, is rhymed A.A.B.B. Having addressed the burial of Eats, Arden concludes by addressing the shade of the dead Eats again, asking him to persuade us to rejoice and to heal us with the fountain of his work. The final couplet sees Arden commanding Eats, poet, for Eats the man has gone to teach the free man the living to praise and celebrate in the short time allotted to us. That is prison of his days. This is the in memory of W. E. Yeats, Auden describes the day of Yeats' death as a dark cold day, but this is objectively true rather than mere pathetic fallacy or romantic expression. Of course, this doesn't discount the possibility that Auden feels the day of Yeats' passing to have been cold and dark in a more abstract, even metaphysical sense. But it is also something on which all the instruments can agree it was cold as and it was dark. In memory of W.B. Yeats, is in the last analysis a powerful poem, not just about Yeats, but about all poets whose work can teach us how to prize. These final words of Auden's poem are fittingly enough inscribed on the poet's own memorial stone in Poets' Corner in Westminster Abbey. This is all about this poem. Thank you.